subs and besties. Today we are doing another versus, Rainbow High versus DIY. Let me first say, I think the Rainbow High pool is pretty cool. I don't have a place to store it like on display. So every time I wanna use it, I do have to assemble it, which uh, can be a little tedious but that really sounds like a me problem, so I wouldn't hold that against the product. Oops, forgot this. We do a pool every year, just about, so this feels like a good time to go ahead and knock it out. I do like the setup here, so in our DIY, I wanna try to incorporate some of these elements, like the clear pool, the attached counter, and a seating area. All right, let's get started and gather our materials. I found this clear tray at Target. I think we can use it for the front of the pool. It was at the beginning of the store. I often call it the value section, but I think it's called bullseye something. Yeah, it was like three or $5. I bought it a while ago and uh, I thought this would be a good place or a good time to use it. For the stairs, I was thinking we could use the stairs from our poster board room. They're already done and they're fairly sturdy. And if we glue them to a wall, they'll be even better. For the seating at the bar, let's use the stools we made over the holidays in our easy doll gifts video or Christmas gifts video. Yeah, one of those. And for the seating, let's use this set that we made in an earlier video. It was a while ago. I think it was like DIY love seat and table. It definitely has a patio furniture type of vibe. I am missing a cushion, so we'll have to do something about that. We are going to make this a folding doll room, which we like to call a hidden doll room around here. I'm using white foam board. However, you can always use cardboard instead. I cut my walls 13 inches tall. Actually, I just cleared off a space on the top of my shelf. So I think we can push this one to 14 inches. Let's sketch out a plan so we know just what we're working with and how much foam board we're going to need. So I need my back wall to be about 56 inches. Right now it's 40. And I need a floor that is 27 and a half inches wide. So we're gonna have to glue and piece the foam board together to get the right length. Definitely going to need a lot of table space for this, but you can always choose to scale it down and make it smaller. Following our plan, on the back wall, I score a line 15 inches from the edge, then 13 inches from that line and another one 15 from that. So the whole thing can fold up and make a box, giving us four walls. And this will be about the size of the playable space. With about 28 inches on the back wall, 15 on this side and 13 on that one. And the floor that we cut at 27 and a half inches should be able to fit right in the middle with a tiny bit of extra space for a clearance in that corner and on this front edge so it can close up properly. We do need to score the floor at about 12 and three quarter inches from the edge. So the floor will be able to fold up. You could always go with 12 and a half if you need a little bit more wiggle room. Let's take the clear tray that we're using for our pool and mark the floor where we need water paper to be. We're gonna place the stairs in the back, so I mark off a line there as well. Then I cover it with a water print paper. You can use scrapbook paper. I'm using a printable that is available for free on our blog. On the rest of the floor, I'm using a light colored wood print. Let's mark the height of our pool on the side wall. For me, that's about seven inches. I drew the line going around and I can see that our stairs are a little short. The side of our stairs was made to look like a freestanding wall. And I'm just gonna cut off the top 
and glue it on top to get a little more height. We don't need this wall here. So let's go ahead and cut that off. And I have to resize the part we cut off to make it smaller. I added some support underneath and on the sides. Let's glue it on top. I ended up trimming off that whole other side. Now let's cover it with paper just on the visible areas. This is going to go back here behind the pool and our pool is this wide so we need to make another wall. I cut a piece of foam board the same size as the plastic tray. It's gonna go right here so this might be visible. Let's cover that real quick and cover parts of the wall that will be visible on the stairs. We're still a little short so I used some leftover foam board to make a platform to go on top. On the other side of the wall, let's cover that with the blue water paper. Once everything has been glued, it will go like this. This will all be glued into the corner of our room and that'll be the pool. So hopefully it works. I kind of want a little window right here. So let's draw and cut out a little window. Now let's cover the top of the wall with the stone and the bottom with water. Let's stand this up for a second and see how it's going to look. Place the stairs in the corner and we still have all of that to do. I'm trying to decide if we want to cover this with more stone or do we want like a large opening or maybe a window with a scenic view. Sketch out a window, cut it out, cover the remaining foam board with printables or a scrap of paper, whatever you like. Wrapping the paper over the edge and gluing it to the back. Don't pay attention to my nails. We're crafting here. No time for a manicure. I made another large cutout on the other wall, so we have two open windows. Of course, you don't have to keep them open. You can always glue an image behind them, like a picture from a calendar. So you have the perfect view at all times but I like having the option of changing the background. So I'll probably just use like a little bit of poster putty or tape to put it behind it. And that gives me the opportunity to change it when I like, or even play with light. Now let's glue the floor into this back corner here. You wanna make sure you don't glue this side because it needs to be able to move, but we do want glue along that one and that side. I used hot glue to secure it. And now you can see we have this large space where the floor can fold up and the side comes in for easy storage. Now that window gets blocked so we don't have to worry about things falling out of this space, but this is left open. Now we can open it back up and lay the floor down for our room. Let's glue in the stairs into this back corner. Let's glue in our clear wall. Now we just need to make a wall for this side, but we're also going to add like a little countertop as well. I cut three rectangles of foam board. My largest one is about 10 and a half. The shorter ones are a little less than seven. They're gonna go on this side of the pool to create the bar area. But we also need to cut a large rectangle to go underneath and be the final wall to the pool. So I cut another piece that should fit underneath. I cover the thin strips with a marble paper and one side of the large rectangle with the water print. Once everything has been covered, glue in one of the sides, then glue in the wall, glue on the other side, then glue the last piece on top. Add a little tape on top if you wanna make the marble shine, completing our little poolside bar. 
We can take the stools that we made in one of our holiday videos and place them underneath. Let's add our sofa, maybe in this back corner. And we can add one of our paper house plants behind it instead of a palm tree. And I don't think we need the other chair. I think we're kind of uh, running out of space here. I mean, we could put it like that, but do you really even see it? Well, if we put it like that and then just move this over a little, that's not so bad. I found the other cushion. So we're gonna put that in this chair right here and the small coffee table we made to go with this set. Completing our pool in a hidden doll room. Now we don't have an umbrella, but I'm gonna say this is like an indoor pool. So I'm gonna say it counts. We have light coming from over there. Please excuse Tiny Chef and Grogu. And we can have light coming through this cutout. Pool with clear front, check. Counter with seating, check. Stairs, check. Lounge area with a table, check. Greenery, check. And the dolls can sit over here on the top of this little landing. We can add a few more of our paper house plants for a little more greenery. And we can use pictures from calendars or scrapbook paper to change the background. And since this is a hidden doll room, it all folds up for easy storage. We just have to put the furniture inside the pool. And there is a lot of space for our dolls. So I spent about $10 in foam board. The acrylic tray cost me three to $5. So let's assume it was five, bringing us to 15. Then a lot of the items I already had, like the furniture and the stools. And I printed out all of my backdrops. So I can't tell you exactly how much that cost. But if you were using scrapbook paper, I would say this is probably about $5, maybe $6 worth of scrapbook paper, depending on where you're shopping. So this project could cost about $20 to $25, more if you're starting from scratch, less if you have a lot of items already on hand. Now, my pool doesn't have lights or water, but to be honest, I never use the water features anyway, so that's not a big loss to me. And I do enjoy the backdrops and the storage. So, how did our DIY do? Did it come close or did we miss the mark? Thank you for joining us for another Versus. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my Froggy Stuff and the Frog Vlog and Bella of My Froggy Stuff. And we will see you next time.